Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how we can create a filter pane experience in Power Apps. We will use the responsive container controls and open and close the filter pane. And we will also look at how to apply multiple filters against our data source. So let's check out the video. One of the most common scenarios in Power Apps is to filter data coming from our data source. Here, I have a gallery control, the data for which is coming from a SharePoint list, and I've provided options to the user to filter based on specific columns and data types. For example, show me all the tasks that are in progress and the priority is high, where the due date is between 23rd November 2020 to 1st November 2021. I can even search for the name of the task. There's also a reset button. If the user selects this, it resets all the filters. It gets all the data from the data source. Key things here are the filter section on the top is taking real estate away from my Power App. Also, as the user is applying these filters, the only visual cue is the fact that the user has made a selection. Now I thought about what would be a more intuitive way of providing filtering options. SharePoint lists and libraries have this filter option. If I select this, it opens the filter pane on the right hand side. And here it allows the user to apply different filters based on the column types that are provided. So for example, show me all the tasks that are assigned to me or assigned to James and the priority is high. And if I was to come out of this panel, there is a visual indicator that there is a filter being applied. If I open up the filters pane, I also have an option to clear the filters. I have a power app that has its data coming from a SharePoint list. On the right hand side, I have provided the filters pane. So if the user would want to refine the results, they select that icon. And this opens the panel from the right hand side. Here, I have provided the various filtering options. For example, show me all those devices that are currently owned by me. Or I have a people picker control here. I can search for a specific user, let's say James. So now it shows all the devices that are owned by me or owned by James. Where the color of the device is black. I have also provided independent reset options. So if I would like to only reset the color filter, I select this, it resets the color filter. If I would like to reset the current owner filter, I select this. Also, when I select a specific filter on the top right hand corner, you can see how I am changing the icon to highlight that a filter has been applied. So if the user was to close the panel, this icon being filled is a clear visual indicator that a filter has been applied. If I select this, I can see the filter in action. If I was to click on this icon, it will reset all the filters. For the due date of the device, I've created the slider control experience where the user can select the days since this device has been due. So let's see how we can transform an app that has the standard filters applied on the top and move it into a filter pane section on the right hand side. I want to add that filters pane. Now you have two options. You can either add the filters pane as a control on the right hand side, hide and show it depending upon conditions, which I will put in play now, or you could leverage the new responsive container controls. So let's try and use that. I'll go to settings of the app, go to display, turn off scale to fit for the power apps so that we get the responsive controls to play with. For my screen, I will go and insert a horizontal container since I want the gallery and the filter pane to be positioned horizontally to each other. Once I added this container, I'll place it right below my header section. The width for this container will be parent dot width. And the height for this container would be parent dot height minus my header label control dot height. The gallery control I will cut and I'll go to the container control and paste it in there. 
inside this container, I want to create another control wherein I can add all my filters, basically creating my filter pane. For that, I will go to insert. I will use a container control. I will first rename this to my filter pane. The flexible width, I will turn this off and give it a defined width of let's say 220 pixels. I will give this a different background color to have this pop effect. So I'll select white for the filters pane. I will add an icon control on the top so that when the user selects that icon, the filter pane will be visible. For that, we'll go to icon and pick the flat icon. On select, create a variable called var filter pane. And the value of this, I will set it to not of the same variable. And this variable I will use for the visible property of my filter pane container. So visible var filter pane. Let's preview the app. Observe how the app is responsive. The gallery takes the full width. The moment I select this, it opens the filter pane. Now inside the filter pane is where I would like to create all my filters. I'll insert a label. And to provide the user an option to close the panel, I will insert a cancel icon, place it on the top right. And when the user selects this, I will set that same variable filter pane to false. I want to provide a filter so that the user can search based on the title of my SharePoint list item. So I'll insert a text control and I'll insert a label control. Set the text of the label control to title. And when the user enters data in this text box, which I have renamed to TXT title, I would like to filter the data. For the gallery control on the items property, I will use the filter function, filter this list where I'll use a function called starts with title, starts with my text box control dot text. Also, I want this filter icon to be changed to a different icon, which would be the flat filter filled icon if there is a filter that has been applied. Now to change this icon dynamically, I would have to check to see if the user has entered some data in this title column. So to do that, for my icon control, I will go to the icon property and write the following formula. If is blank, the text box dot text, then Show the icon filter flat, else filter flat filled. If I preview the app, I have my X icon so I can close the filters pane. Let's say I search for marketing. The moment I do that, a filter is being applied on my gallery control. And the filter icon has changed to a visual indicator for filled. Now for the user to clear the filter inside my filters pane, I'll add an icon. And when the user selects this, I will use the reset function on my text box control. So let's preview the app. The user selects this, text box becomes empty, the gallery shows all the data, the filter icon goes away. Let's add a filter for my status column. My status column is a choice column in my backend data source. So I've added a label for status, and here I have multiple options to play with. I can either use a drop down control for the status or I can go and insert a radio button control. For the items property, use the following formula choices of my SharePoint list dot the name of my status column. Since it is a choice column, it will go and get all the status values. Now I would like to apply this filter as well on the gallery. The filter function would include an additional action in an AND operation. The status column, which is of type choice, so I will have to use status.value, is equal to the radio button dot selected dot value. However, the moment I do this, if I preview my app, my gallery is empty. And the reason is because the formula here is checking to see if the status dot value is equal to the selected value of the radio button, which is blank. But in case of blank, I want to show all the data. I will have to also check if the selected value of the radio button is blank. To do that, I will run the radio button filter in an or condition with 
radio button dot selected dot value is equal to blank and i will ensure that both of these are running in an or operation and the result of this would have an and operation with the title column and we can see it in action right away in the preview of the app itself i see all my data we change the icon depending upon whether a filter is applied or not so here we'll have to add another condition if the title is blank and radio button selected value is equal to blank and for the reset button we will add an additional reset to reset the radio button if i preview the app show me all my data where the status is in progress it will apply that specific filter i can combine this with my title column if i search for laptop it will give me a combination of my data where the title starts with laptop and the status is in progress and i have one record that matches that scenario if i click reset both the filters are removed and i get all the data another common filter that we apply is a filter on items that were created by the logged in user or assigned to the logged in user basically filters on a person type column i will add a label i'll call this assigned to i want to provide a couple of options to the user one they can get all the tasks that are assigned to them so for that i will insert a check box control text would be me i have renamed this check box now to apply the filter based on this check box for my gallery control filter condition i'll add another condition and operator check dot value gives me the value of that check box true or false so if it is checked then i want you to apply this filter which is my assigned to column person type column in my data source the email property of that column is equal to to get the current logged in users information we have a property called user dot email and with this i will also have to apply another check in an or condition if that check box dot value is equal to false the reason why i did this if that check box is not checked this entire condition would evaluate to true so basically the top two filters would be applied if that check box is checked in that case it will add this additional filter now i have to ensure that for the icon property i add an additional check here which would be not of that check box dot value and for the reset function reset that check box control let's try this out the assigned to information i have plugged it in the gallery we can see tasks that are assigned to james and reza if i select me i'm logged in as reza it will apply the filter for the logged in user if i remove the filter it will showcase all the data all of these filters run together in an and operation i can pick me and show me all my tasks that are new it applies both the filters if i select reset it will clear all my filter criteria now if you want to provide an additional option where the user gets a people picker experience there is no people picker control in power apps but here's a quick trick especially for folks who use sharepoint as a data source add a new screen add an edit form control connect to your sharepoint list that has a person type column and right here i have my assigned to column which is of type person in this data card i have this combo box control i'm going to select this and copy this go back to my home screen and inside the filter pane i will paste that control you will get a few errors so if i go to edit in the formula bar go ahead and remove the formulas that are causing those errors once you have those fixed if i was to preview the app this is a people picker experience if i search for the user james it will search in my active directory for the user james and for this as well i can insert a checkbox provide no text i have renamed this checkbox for the filter function of my gallery apart from checking if the checkbox for me is equal to false i will also have to check checkbox other dot value is equal to false and then i'll apply my condition the checkbox other dot value and the assigned to column is equal to my combo box control dot selected dot email 
for the icon. I've added an additional check in my if condition and for the reset, to reset my new checkbox. Let's test this out. Show me all the tasks that are assigned to me or are assigned to James. If I remove me, it will only show me the tasks that are assigned to James. So here's a combination now of both these actions in an OR filter. And this will run in an AND condition with my filters at the bottom. Show me all the tasks that are blocked. So Reza and James have one task each that are blocked. If I click reset, all the filters would be reset. The same logic is what I have implemented in this app as well, wherein I have my current owner filters, I have my radio filters for choice options, and for the date control, I went and leveraged a slider control that slides between minus 365 and plus 365, so I'm giving it range for a year. And then for the filter function, I have this formula that applies all those filters on my SharePoint list. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much.